Jackson Radio Show. In fact, if the pace of change continues for the duration of Trump's presidency, however long that might be, I think he could become the most consequential president in the modern era. When you look at uh, what President Trump signaled all year, foreshadowed all year, I go back again and again to day two of the presidency, standing at that CIA wall, uh, just blowing up, or, just blowing up orthodoxy. The idea that there is no no hallowed ground in American politics or policy where you can't make a political statement, you can't signal your political intentions. And I think the rest of the year has followed on that front. He's very much well, the, shown... With the Indian code talkers. You know, he's very <laughs> much shown that, that, that the regular rules don't apply to him. I think but, the question is, do the, has he blown up the regular rules for everybody else, too? But, but, but to Rich's point, he's been obviously brutally harsh on the press. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, fake news and all that, enemies of the people, uh, over the top. But he's actually been an incredibly media-friendly president, even before he started handing out pens. <laughs> I mean... Did you I mean, get a pen, John? <laughs> Somebody needs a pen. I, you know, there, there's a duality there. In the short term, in the day-to-day, in terms of coverage and that sort of access, absolutely. There was a ton of interaction with the president. In the long term, in terms of if you believe that the free pass is sort of a pillar of American democracy. Or and, the and, Department uh, of Justice or power. the FBI right. or our intelligence agencies. It's been very destructive on that front in the long term. And so it's both. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. That is the left uh talking about donald trump and he's been a a very accessible president let me tell you uh obama the criticism of him was how he orchestrated the media in the sense of you get access you don't and it got to the point where he had them fighting they were like please treat us good and we'll say pretty 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 things about you in our paper and it became this love fest no matter what he did and let me tell you Congratulations to them because that clown lost them a thousand plus offices in eight years. And if you were to read about it, you go, wow, they, he's amazing. I don't know. Look, if Do- we're going to get our litmus test in 2018. Either Donald Trump's on the right, which for the record, we know he's on the right track. I don't, I'm not going to try to be all dogmatic and say no matter what happens, because if we get our clocks clean like Obama did in 2010, We'll have a wake up call, but I'm going to make a prediction and I've already done it. So it's not like this is new, but we're going to clean their clocks. And, but here's what happens. If for the sake of discussion, we were to get crushed in 2018, the way that uh, Barack Obama got crushed in 2010, we would be crazy not to at least step back and go, what happened? Now, keep in mind, we don't cheat. I mean, not, I mean, I honestly, I, I don't know Republicans that cheat. Uh, but let's say that they do. We don't cheat to the level of Democrats. I guarantee you we don't. We aren't strategizing about, you know, how do we uh, get more illegal votes to come in our favor? We're not bringing in Mexicans and refugees and prisoners and, and everybody else, dead people. We're like, look, let the vote go where it goes. We want it to be a free and fair election. But the left don't do that. But if for the sake of discussion, if Donald Trump were to get his clock clean and we were to get our clocks clean, I would be the first to go, wow. Now, the first thing I would think is cheating. And I'm going to tell you right now, we better be vigilant because the only way did my voice creak, the only way we lose this election in 2018, I'm talking about overwhelming seats that they are claiming. Paul Begala, I played a clip from him. The Democrats are going to clean their clocks because he's looking at all this. Oh, well, look at what happened in Virginia. Look at what happened in New Jersey. Look at what happened in Alabama. And I'm thinking, look at what's happening right now before your very eyes as Donald Trump continues rock star status. And we wrote a piece that showed the number of people who, who still credited Barack Obama's for the economy in, say, um, May of this year and who now and it was 60 something percent credited Barack Obama in May and now only like 27 percent. It's a huge jump. So another and then in in May, they said Trump was responsible for the economy was like, say, 30 percent. I don't know the numbers, but now it's well into the 40s. So Trump is now. Sur- almost surpassing Obama in terms of whatever the, I think Obama may still be one point up as of November. 
So I said, well, when they get the December numbers, you're going to see less people credit Obama with the economy. I mean, it was every single month Obama's numbers went down and his numbers dropped like 30 points. Every single month, uh, Trump's numbers went up and that that line is about to cross in December. December of, of last year is when Trump was given more credit for the economy than Obama. January of this year, when that report comes out, it's going to distance itself further. And by July, August of this year, Trump will be considered in polling 60, 70 percent minimum responsible for the economy. And there'll be a few Obama holdouts, but it'll be 20 percent at best. That's what the what you can look at. That chart was the best indicator, in my opinion, of where things sit with with Donald Trump than almost anything I've seen to date. It was and, and, and keep in mind, I don't remember where the chart came from because I'd really like to be able to tell you it was lefty or righty. But whoever did it, knowing how the numbers are all skewed against Trump anyway and skewed it on behalf of Obama, the fact that Obama consistently dropped three, four points a month all the way into into November and Trump was gaining four to five points a month all the way into November and where that trajectory was headed, no question. We are seeing this monumental shift, folks, monumental. Now it gets even more shocking. Donald Trump's approval versus other world leaders. Now, at the end of uh, his first year, leftists had lost their mind because Rasmussen came out with a poll. And that poll showed Donald Trump statistically tied with Obama at the end of year one. Now, I want you to consider what what we're talking about here. We're talking about a president of. Barack Obama, who and he lost, I want to say it was over 5 million jobs year one, unemployment, 11 point something percent. Uh, it, it was dismal. The numbers are so bad. It, it's actually shocking how bad they were. And then you contrast that with Donald Trump, who barely made a dent in the deficit in, in the I'm sorry, in the debt, barely made a dent. We're, we're over 20 trillion, but it's minuscule. Barack Obama's debt load at the end of of, uh, of his first year was he would added a couple trillion dollars to the debt and the budget had ballooned. And the only good indicator was the stock market was up like 23 percent. And they only they only the thing I saw only showed the uh, uh, the S&P didn't show the Dow. Trump's numbers were 20 percent, a little lower on the S&P, but higher on the Dow and Every other indicator was, I'm talking about through the roof. Obama lost 5 million jobs. Trump, they said, had gained 1.7 million. So that'll just give you some perspective. So they were at a statistical tie. And this is with Donald Trump being, you know, all the beat down they've given him in the media. And he managed to tie Obama, who they were still propping up after everything this guy had promised and couldn't deliver on. They were still propping him up. And so here's Trump statistically tied. So the media was mad. What's he doing bragging about this? There are other polls that show that he's not doing nearly as well. And I jokingly said, yeah, these are the same polls that had him losing the election. But his best indicator, in my opinion, is not what the polls are saying about him. But what are the polls saying about other world leaders? It got me curious because I want you to understand every world leader outside of Trump is a socialist or a communist. Every one of them. They've all followed some doctrine of socialism, entitlement programs, giving away, you know, open borders, the whole thing. How's it working out? And so I wanted to to find out. So I started with Mexico's uh, Peña Nieto and Pew had him at 28 percent approval. And here's what they said. President Enrique Peña Nieto's popularity has continued to plunge since Pew Research began asking about him in 2011. Today, 28% of Mexicans ex- express a favorable opinion of the president, less than half the share that supported him in 2011. He was at 61%. Current favorability marks a 16 percentage drop since 2015, a 28 point drop since the center's 2012 poll conducted just months before he was elected president. 
And that's a dramatic improvement from March of 2017. December 2012, when Enrique Peña uh, Peña Nieto took office as president, his approval rating was 54%. It was a modest but respectable showing considering he'd been elected from a four-candidate field with about 38% of the vote. But it's gone down since then. So he's now at 28% favorability in his own country. This is the guy that bucked Donald Trump he, we're not building any wall. We're not paying for no wall, blah, blah, blah. So while Donald Trump is now at 46%, I don't know where they had him, like in the 30s, he's gone up every year. These are signs, folks. This is what I'm trying to tell you. This is a sign. A guy who bucked Donald Trump in Mexico, uh, Nieto, is now much lower than Trump. More in a bit. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. 